So it's fair to say that Microsoft Teams had an uncertain start a few months ago when it was released into preview. In fact, like me, you may have turned on the preview and found a number of features that you used in the old version of Teams simply not there and then had to give up with it pretty quickly. Well, the good news is Microsoft Teams has come a long way in a short amount of time. The new version of Teams is now much more performant and comes with nearly all of the features that are in the classic version of Microsoft Teams. And I've even been using it for the last few weeks without any hiccups at all. So that made me think it's time now to go into that new version of Teams and to show you how you can get the most from it. So when you're ready to move across, that experience will be a pleasant one and you'll also have to take advantage of all those great new features in the latest version of Microsoft Teams. So let's dive in and find out how you can get the most from the new version of Teams. So here we are in the latest version of Microsoft Teams and you probably found it loading pretty quickly. You'll also see those performance improvements inside of the Teams app. For example, I can go through and click on all of my channels. You can see the content loads really quickly. In fact, if I scroll up and then scroll down, you can also see there are no load times for content inside of these channels. If I switch over to other tabs inside of Teams, maybe in my Files tab, we also see it loading really quickly. These are areas that we didn't see in the last version of Teams and wait seconds for a simple tab like Files to load. We're already seeing great improvements when it comes to performance. But when you're starting out and using this Teams app, there are some settings that you can go and check and ensure they're all correct ready for you to use this new version of Teams. The first one is going to be the theme. So here I'm using the classic Teams theme. It's unlikely that your Teams will look like this out of the box. But if you want to change themes and designs inside of Teams, head up to the top, select the free dot menu, go into settings, and then head to appearance and accessibility. And once you're in here, you can see I'm using a classic theme, meaning the classic purple theme. If I change this and move it into dark, we'll now see we're using Teams Dark Mode and Dark Theme. If I then change it once again to follow operating system, I'm using Windows 11, so I have the Windows 11 theme. So if you want to change your theme so that more suits your needs, you can do so very easy in the settings dialog. But there's also further improvements when it comes to devices. And that is an important area because when you move to your new version of Teams, you may have lost your selected devices. So head into the devices section inside of the settings tab. And when you're in here, at the top, ensure that your speaker, your mic and audio devices are the ones that you expect. If they've been reset to the default, you can update them by clicking into the drop down and selecting for that new device in readiness for your next meeting. So you're also going to find a new experience when it comes to working in your Teams. That is, on the right hand side, we have a new team information panel. In this scenario, I quickly see all of the people inside of the team and have quick access to them. We can also have a very simple process to find a keyword in this given channel. So search is simplified using the Teams information panel on the right. But also, you can go into channel notifications and you can also turn notifications on for particular channels that you have an interest in, which is quite powerful. But also, updates as you can see here, as people post and change in channels, you'll be able to quickly have a review of those inside of the Teams information panel on the right hand side. A powerful way to understand what's going on in your Teams. And inside in Microsoft Teams channels, you can also switch around where you're gonna see latest posts and even the ability to post a new message in a channel. All we need to do is click on the freed up menu and you'll see an option to see new posts at top. So now the new posts and all the latest posts in the channel will now appear at the top. Allows you to switch both upwards and downwards depending on your requirements. A very simple way to work with those channel posts and get them in the order that you would prefer. But also you can pop out channel conversations. That's useful if you need to post and reply, but also get other work done in Teams at the same point. Same way we'd use chat in Teams. To have a pop out conversation of one of these channel conversations, click on the freed up menu and select open conversation in new window. 
You'll then see the conversation thread is all appearing in this dialogue. And I can easily drag it out of the way and click into another one of my channels and still have my dialogue open, being able to chat with my colleagues in that relevant channel. So you can pop out those conversations anytime that you would prefer and get working with them easily. So it felt like a great time to take a short break. And within that, let's also explain what we do in case you need any help in the future. Because your 365 coach is focused on you getting the most out of Microsoft 365. Whether you, your team or business need consultancy or training or coaching on Microsoft 365 technologies, we can certainly help. To find out more about what we do, head to the link below. You can even contact us. Not only that, on our site, there is a free Microsoft 365 ebook that you can download and access to give you even greater ways to work in Microsoft 365. So other than that, now we've taken that breath, let's head back into Teams and keep discovering all of those new capabilities. But the biggest change in Microsoft Teams comes from when you work with third parties. Now you may remember in the past when you had to do this, you'd largely have to sign out and sign in to these other tenants. So you may have your own tenant and I have my own tenant. That means you need to switch out of them and do things called tenant switching. However, the problem was that when you switch tenant, you would largely be offline in your own home tenant. People would think you're off work and you couldn't even join meetings. You'd end up being stuck in your own meeting lobby. Well, all of that has been vastly improved. Now, in this scenario, I actually have access to another tenant. They've invited me in as a third party using my email address to another shared team. What I can then easily do in the top right is by clicking on my profile picture and name, I can then see my availability at the top for my current tenant, but also I can see I'm also available in the other third party tenant, one of my customers. So that means I'm available across multiple tenants. What also happens in Teams is it keeps an eye on notifications and things going on across all of those tenants that you're a part of. Here I see there is a one above a notification. When I click in this, it shows me the activity, my other organizations that I'm part of. And when I left click into it, it'll simply switch me over and show me the chat message in the other tenant. I'm very easily come in, do a thumbs up, or I can reply to this conversation all while staying online in my original tenant in the company. I can also click into Teams inside of the other tenant and begin working on that team with my customers and suppliers. And when I wanna go back into my own IT environment in the company, all I need to do is click into my name at the top, select my home IT area by the company name, and now I'm back in that area. But once again, I'm still available in the other tenant and my notifications tray will keep me alert to any changes happening in those other IT setups from customers and suppliers and more. So the ability to work with third parties efficiently in Teams has massively been improved and works really well when you need to do that. And when it comes to your availability, well, much has stayed the same. You'll be able to click in the top right and set your availability. I might here put myself into busy but equally, I might be working from home. And a new option in Teams allows us to set whether I'm working in an office or remotely, which syncs into my Outlook calendar using Scheduling Assistant and also appears through Teams. So I'll say here, I'm gonna be working remotely, and that now will be shown in my availability. I could also set a custom status message to let people know that I'm not around for the next few hours, going to an appointment, or simply out of the office, catching up with a few friends. And also you can do the same for the other tenants you're part of. Much like I showed you earlier, we can click into those tenants and you can see I'm marked as available. Well in here, I wanna actually mark myself as a peer away. I can do so returning back to my home tenant and by clicking into my profile manager here, I still show as being away, but yet still busy in my own home tenant. So you can create different availability settings in each tenant that you're part of through the profile manager. And as part of these new Teams improvements, we also get a new Files tab. Now those File tab changes have actually come from OneDrive for business improvements, but have found their way in Teams. All we need to do is go over to the Files tab 
and we'll see the new OneDrive and Files experience appearing here. If you haven't seen this previously, it is a more simplified way of working, but it does work really well. Here is an example of all of my recent files that I've worked with across Microsoft 365. I can then very easily click into a document and review that document inside of the Teams app. I can make changes using the online experience and save them back straight to where they came from, whether that's in SharePoint or Teams. And to go back, I can close out of this document, return back to my Files tab. Now, alongside all of my recents, I also have the ability to filter through them. I'd like to see all of the PDFs we have inside of my recent documents. And alongside that, My Files has all of my OneDrive files, quick access to all of your OneDrive, and there's even the ability now to click in the free dot menu and give folders different colors. So that is all supported through the Teams app. And likewise, we have a shared tab. The shared tab shows me all the content that's been shared with me via sharing links. Quick access to them straight through the Files tab. But equally, I can see content I've shared with others and I have quick access through the Share dialog to make changes and even revoke those sharing links should that be needed. And if you work with favorited files, then there's a quick way to get to them. All we then need to do is mark any of our files that we work with in 365 as a favorite through this files dialog here. And I can go to the favorites tab and also have quick access to all of my favorite files. I won't have to search through or filter for them. And as we work with more Teams and SharePoint libraries, well, they'll appear over in quick access. Here is my business development library I'm working with. And it might be that I want to keep this pinned with quick access in the files tab. Well, I click on the pin icon and that now will be pinned inside of the Files tab, meaning I can click through my libraries without going anywhere near the team itself to have quick access to all of those files. Super powerful when it comes to file management using a new files experience in Teams. One of the things in the new Teams that you might struggle with is getting back to past meetings you were part of, maybe recordings or content has been shared. Well, there's a great way to do that now. In the freed up menu to the left, look out for the Meet app. If you can't find it, just type in the word Meet and you'll find the Meet app, which is a Microsoft provided app. Here, you'll have quick access to all of the meetings that you've been part of. If content has been shared, such as meeting minutes and notes via Microsoft Loop, you'd have quick access by clicking into them. Likewise, if you have recordings, while well, the Meet app and the tab will also show you that content. Here, I'll go back and filter for recorded. And here's a meeting that I have a recording. All I need to do is click on View Recap, and here is the recording directly available from Microsoft Teams. And I can have this view across my recent meetings and upcoming meetings to get back to content quickly inside of the Teams Meet app, which you can load and access freely as well. So there we go, the latest Microsoft Teams that can help you in so many ways. Whether that's gonna be the better performance you're gonna get from it, or equally, if you work with customers and suppliers and want to be available in their IT environments freely, well, this provides the answer to that, as well as general improvements across the piece to make the whole Teams experience much better. Now, hopefully, you can take the knowledge I've shared with you today and apply it to your new team setup and to get you using Teams in the right way, straight from the off. Now, if you like this video, we'd love it if that like button, but also hit that subscribe button to find more great content like this that we can turn you into a productivity superstar. Otherwise, I'll be seeing you in the next one.